Hi, everybody. Hello, Miracle. Uh, Hello, Tara. I slashed Dan in the face yesterday. <laughs> she what? Oh, this is a story. Dan got woken up uh, with a kitty claw digging into the front tip of his nose because breakfast was late. <laughs> yep. This kitty rules the house with an iron paw. So, uh... I guess he slept a little later than Miss Miracle was willing to accept, and so she woke him up by gouging him in the nose, which then caused him to jump out of a sound sleep and fuck up his neck all day. And then she vomited all over the hallway about an hour later. It was open war <laughs> yesterday. Like I was the neutral party in an open fiancé cat war. <laughs> And then she knew he was pissed, so she spent the whole day just being as cute as possible. I just love you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I love you. Hi. Love you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are we not gonna look at the we're not gonna look up? We're not gonna admit not. to our savagery yesterday. No, I don't know what you're talking about. She's I look, she's deliberately looking over there is nothing over your shoulder. Nothing. Maybe that asshole should have fed me on time and I wouldn't have had to fuck up his face. <laughs> Bitch, I will cut you. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, sit on your tower if you're not going to cooperate. How are you? I am okay. How was your New Year's? Uh, pretty good. We had a few people over. Watched Kathy Griffin troll Anderson Cooper for about four hours. And then didn't Don Lemon much all of us started falling asleep by like one because we're old. Didn't Don and I, and I had worked all day. Didn't so. Don Lemon bust out with like Kathy Griffin's got a nice rack or something? Well, the great thing about watching CNN on New Year's Eve is they're all like journalists, so they're all total nerds. But on New Year's Eve, they send them all out to do live remotes as though they're reporting a live story, but it's just New Year's Eve. So you have all these live remote anchors getting totally fucking drunk. Yeah. So in between having Kathy Griffin just trolling the fuck out of Anderson Cooper on camera and watching Anderson Cooper be uncomfortable as hell, you have all these like serious reporters that are out tanked out of their minds. So like Don Lemon was in a fucking hot tub in a fedora he stole from somebody. Talking about Kathy Griffin's nice rack. Don Lemon's gay. He could give no fucks about Kathy Griffin's rack. But yeah, it was pretty great. So what you're saying is we're more respectable journalists than the journalists on CNN. Yeah, except for Anderson Cooper. I still respect my Andy, but pretty much the rest of the CNN has gone to shit. Also, you are, once again, we talked about this on July 4th, you're very fortunate in that you actually have a pet who is deaf. Yes. Kitty gives no fucks. So she's when the like, fireworks go off... Yeah, she doesn't care. She doesn't get... She's like, what, something going on? No. Yeah. I think I told you, when we, when we were putting up all our Christmas decorations, she fell asleep on the chair in the living room. So we did it all while she was asleep, and because she's deaf, she didn't hear a damn thing. So she woke up when we were done and just sat there looking around like, what the fuck did you guys do to the house? I don't understand what's but happened to my world. Life must be really stressful for her because she just wakes up and shit's different. Like she wakes up and we're not home or she goes to sleep and we're not home and she wakes up and we are home or she doesn't hear us enter a room or leave a room or she wakes up and there's a Christmas tree like. It must be really stressful. It's an adventure. Every day is yeah, an but adventure. But I feel bad. It must really stress her out sometimes. She never knows what's going on. Well, it is, of course, that time again. And just because the new year came does not mean stupid took a weekend off. So let's get well, to it. Well, we have it. all kinds of new year's stupid, I imagine. Of course. Um, Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I got the shot wrong. I got the shot wrong. Oh, okay, it's better now. And let's start off with in America, a lot of countries, but America particularly, um, we have 
we're very dependent on truck drivers for delivery of goods to, to quite a large segment of the populace. Yeah, and we don't realize how much we are. Yeah, because, and and it, driving a truck, everyone's always like, oh, truck drivers, yuck, yuck. No, no, it's a kind of a big deal. They you are- pretty much can't live without truck drivers. And they are not, they, they have to keep track of lots of shit like math. They have to know math. It's kind of important when you're carrying, oh, 12 tons of, of something or other, and you're driving across, you know, our crumbling infrastructure. Yeah. This kids for anyone who's ever sought who's ever sat through math class and thought, why do I need this? Here's why. A truck driver knocked down bridge said she, quote, didn't know how much six tons were. Wow, this is from a website of trucking news and entertainment. Yes. I didn't know there was such a site. I guess it makes sense. Earlier this week, a semi-truck struck an old cast iron bridge, causing it to collapse into a creek in Paoli, Indiana. The results of the police investigation are in, and they reveal some startling information. According to a Facebook post by the Orange County, Indiana law enforcement, the driver of the semi-truck, 23-year-old Mary Lambright, had intentions to park the rig in the parking lot of the Walmart, but missed her exit. After several unsuccessful attempts to turn around, she decided to continue down South Gospel Street. When she approached the 140-year-old bridge, she continued through the bridge despite no, there's a sign, you can see it in the picture, no semis, weight limit of six tons. The weight of the semi caused the bridge to collapse into the tree, into the creek. When asked by Paoli police why she continued through the bridge without knowing the weight limit was only six tons, she admitted to not knowing how many pounds that was. I mean, I don't either. It's 2,000! Okay. Okay, it's not metric, but still, it's it's one of Wait, those... six tons is 2,000 pounds? Well, one ton is 2,000 pounds. Okay. Six tons is 12,000 pounds. Okay. See? Yeah, I didn't know that, but then again, I don't work in an industry where I need to know that, generally. Exactly! If your entire job is based on sending something weighing a certain amount from one place to another, you kind of need to know weight. And the thing is, even if you didn't know that, there's a picture of a sign with a truck that looks like the one you're in and a red circle and a slash. So even if you don't know the math, you can generally probably understand pictograms. <laughs> you don't even need to know how to read! Right to tell you that the thing you are in does not belong in this place. And if you scroll down the article, you can see the, what she did to that bridge. Yeah. Holy God. Look at the bridge. That's a 140 year old cast iron bridge. Now, admittedly, why are they still using a 140 year old cast iron bridge instead of, you know, just sort of putting up memorial placard and routing around it, but <laughs> the bridge is out. Oh, Lionheart, yeah. The bridge is out forever. This, I mean, she's 23 years old. That seems young to be driving. I guess if you have the training, it doesn't matter. And driving with her 17-year-old cousin as well. Yeah. I mean, that seems young to be driving that kind of equipment, but I guess if you can drive and have the training... She didn't, though! Well, she might have had the training and just not retained it. I mean, shit. how many shit drivers are out there that earned a license? How much training do you need to know that the picture of the thing you're in with a circle and a slash through it means no? Okay, I live in New Jersey now. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people who pass the driving test who don't know what pictograms on signs mean. Not defending them or this person. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. If there's a picture of a thing that looks like the thing you're in and then a circle and a slash, maybe you rethink your decision. 
When I got here to Illinois, I had to convert my driver's license to Illinois. And I was like, well, you have to take the written test. And I was like, oh, wow, it's been a long time since I've done that. I was, I was actually kind of a little worried about it. I'm like, wow, well, I still remember all this stuff. So I took the written test and it was easy as hell. I completely aced it 100%. And as I'm going up there to get the printout, the lady at the DMV is like, wow, you got the whole thing right. And I'm like, <laughs> does that not happen very often? Oh, it's a little scary, isn't it? Oh, she was like super impressed. She was like, oh. and I was like, are you from the future? <laughs> I had to retake my road test. Maybe how many years ago? Maybe 10 years ago, because my license got suspended and I never fixed it. And I just kept driving on it. I know. And then finally, when I had to fix it, they were like, well, your license has been suspended and expired for so long that you now have to retake your road test. So that was fun. Well, I we have our next we've got more road shenanigans. Our next story is probably God bless it. This story is so Canadian. It hurts. I mean, God damn. This, this this is this is such a Canadian crime. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, what? What? Can I sit in your lap? Then just don't bother me. All right. Okay. Oh, oh, hi. Oh, careful. Don't break your little bony butt. Teen steals school bus for friend who, quote, needed a ride. A 17... Oh. That 17-year-old is facing charges after a school bus was stolen and driven through Hamilton, which is where they hold Ma I mean, hold Con Bravo. Hi, everybody. Over the holidays, police were called to a Tim Hortons in the area. Officers told that three teenagers were seen getting out of the school bus. Investigation revealed the bus had been stolen from a location in Stony Creek the weekend before. How long did they keep that? They kept that school bus for a week? <laughs> In a statement Thursday, police said they'd located the teens and were told the bus was stolen, quote, after one male needed a ride home. That's what the... Where were you hiding it? That they couldn't find it? Oh, yeah, Ma, I got, I got, I, uh, I borrowed a uh, car from a friend. It's out in the front yard. Okay, then. Like... Those are kind of big and conspicuous and yellow. He had kept the bus tucked away over the holiday and decided to pick up some friends and cruise the city streets in the school bus. Oh, well, you're getting so laid driving a school bus. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the coolest shit ever. Everyone is going to want to touch your peepee. -pee. Yeah. I love it. They stole it after someone needed a ride home. Isn't that what school buses are for anyway? Yeah, but usually with a specially appointed driver. <laughs> right! Yeah. Why? I need a ride home. Well, we could ride the school bus or we could just take one ourselves. Or we could just take it. Oh, we just take the school bus ourselves. I... It's... <laughs> I'm just getting like magic school bus flashbacks on this one. We're going to Canada, kids. Ooh, Canada. At least it's better than the time she took the kids to the moon and the one kid took a space helmet off. Did that happen? <laughs> on the magic, yeah, 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 yeah. What, did he die? <laughs> well, he got frozen. That's kind of dark. <laughs> yes, it is. It was fucking, that was Pluto. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry if I'm not down with my magic school bus uh, continuity. I mean, God, Nash. I haven't checked the wiki in a while. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we got your feet. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. I guess I'm a fake magic school bus fan. Yeah, well, you're a total poser. Obviously. And of course, and this one comes to us from New Year's Eve. The, okay, kids, going out, enjoying New Year's is cool. Having fun on New Year's, yes. Don't drink and drive. No. That's all you have to do. 
don't drink and drive, but especially don't drink, drive, film yourself drinking and driving and put that shit on Facebook. Yeah, definitely don't do any of those things. Sheriff said Dustin Ritgers posted his, this video to his personal Facebook page with no privacy settings, taking a swig of alcohol while he was behind the wheel of a car. And even better, from his own comments on his Facebook page, Ritgers responded, I'm a good driver, don't worry, don't worry. I've got one finger on the steering wheel Facebooking while it's raining. Shaking my head. I am good. I am a pro. Okay, so do you do this thing? There's this thing that dudes do that women do not do. Which is drive with your knees. Yes, I do. So you can do other shit. I used to I can't do that. I tell you yes. how many dudes in my life I have encountered that are like eating a sandwich or playing with their fucking phone or whatever and driving with your knees. And here's the thing your knees don't have thumbs, your knees do not have the ability to grip. Your knees are not as flexible in appendage as your hands, and basically you're not supposed to drive with them. But men do it, and I don't. they should stop. I don't do it anymore because once I got a pickup truck, the steering wheel was too high for my knees. That's why you stopped? Yep. Not because it occurred to you that that was a terrible idea? <laughs> nope. <laughs> because it became non- it no longer became an effective method of driving the car. It never was an effective method of driving the car. Ever. <laughs> I suppose I'd get myself like a boot, like sit on some phone books and then start driving with my knees again if I really wanted to. No. <laughs> I at least have, these days, I at least have one hand on the, on the wheel when I'm driving, at least one. If I'm changing the radio station, if I'm taking a drink from something or something, I always at least have one hand on the wheel. Most of the time, no, too. I've been in cars with dudes who are straight up driving the car with nothing but their two knees. Yep. I used to do that. I was I was such when I had my Mustang, I was such an asshole about that. I have people in the back seat and they go, hey, guys, no hands. I that was an that was a dick thing to do. Kids don't do that. Don't be me. Learn from my mistakes. That was a dick thing to do. Yeah. Look, guys, no hands. And everyone would scream, and I thought it was funny, and I was a dick. I've told you, I'm sure, the story about my mother's one-armed milkman when she was a kid. <laughs> when my mom was a kid on Long Island in the 40s, they had, you know, it was back in the milkman days when the milkman delivered milk, and their milkman happened to have one arm and be a terrible driver. Like, he was notorious for his bad driving. Now, my grandmother never learned to drive. She was a single mother who raised four kids and worked at a hot and was a nurse at the state hospital and never learned to drive. I don't know how she did that, but whatever. So every now the milkman would give people rides places if need be. So uh, if you complained about his driving, he had his steering wheel rigged up so that he could remove it and still steer the car. So if you complained about his driving, he would just rip out the steering wheel and hand it to you and go, here, you drive. With his one arm. <laughs> Your milkman was kind of an asshole! Yeah. Tara, sometimes... They're telling me I have told that story before. Sorry. Tara, sometimes you'll just be like, you know, this one time, and everything that follows after that is crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, I grew up on Long Island. Well, your sister just had a baby recently, didn't she? She did. I have a She's very a little... niece who's not even a month old yet. Now, when your she sister... will be a month old... Actually, she's a month old yesterday. I'm wrong. She's a month old yesterday. When your sister was pregnant, did she do that thing where she would, like, take headphones and put it on her stomach and let the kid listen to music? Uh, I don't think so. It's that's a thing. Apparently, listening yeah. to music while in the womb is supposed to make she kids smarter. She mostly listens to country music, so I don't think she wanted to torture her unborn child. Well, she's really into Kenny Chesney. For anyone who's ever said, "Gee, 
just putting speakers to my stomach is just so inefficient. There's a new product for you, ladies. Moms, moms to be. Meet the Baby Pod, an intravaginal speaker for your fetus. Sure. And they're asking about Bridget. Bridget does not actually like the baby very much. When Bridget first met the baby, she growled at it. And now she will sniff it, but not get any closer. Her, her. her. Bridget does not like my niece very much yet. <laughs> baby pod, due to its placement, claims to deliver an unparalleled Christmas crispness in sound to babies in the womb. From the official website, the uterus is a place protected from the exterior and is the mother's body that carries out the protecting role through multiple layers of soft tissue. These attenuate the intensity of sound and distort its journey to the uterus. Similar to, happens to, it's similar to what happens when you hear a conversation in a next door room without catching everything that's said. By placing a speaker inside the vagina, we overcome the barrier formed by the abdominal wall and the baby can hear sounds with almost as much intensity as clarity as when admitted. Two things. Number one, how do you simulate what it's like for you listening to sound in the womb? Do you have like a simulated uterus you put yourself in to say, yeah, it's sound quality here sucks. Number two, I've watched a lot of Mythbusters in the last couple of weeks because they've been running every episode ever, and they could probably build something like that. <laughs> they tested whether you could keep someone alive by putting them inside a tom, -tom, tom, -tom yes. even a real animal. So, Number two. Are you really concerned about audio fidelity yeah. for your... How much of an audiophile hipster jackass do you need to be when you're concerned that your fetus is having trouble listening to the latest hits. My two concerns here are one, the human race got along for thousands of years without playing music for our fetuses. And fine, maybe it's a nice thing to do, but it's not a necessary thing to do, obviously, because there was a human race that was procreating and thriving before there was music. Or headphones. Or musical baby dildos. Second, imagine you're a fetus. And, and, and you're still forming. You don't understand literally anything about the world yet. Anything because you haven't even entered the world yet. You're still living in a little sack of amniotic fluid. And suddenly, this big horking thing comes jamming into your little pot of happiness and joy and blaring noise at you crawling in my skin like that seems really traumatic like you're gonna have the very you're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give birth to the very first generation of humans born with ptsd or born with really shitty taste in music that too. There's another thing I want to note about this device. I wonder if people have picked up on this design issue. This is a speaker I use for listening to uh, like NPR shit when I'm in the shower. It's a little Bluetooth speaker. It's yeah. simple, common. I picked this up for like 20 bucks. Notice there are no wires in or around this, yet it works perfectly well with my cell phone. What's the first thing you notice about this baby pod device? It has a wire. Because I totally want electronics jammed up my nethers. Although there's a speculum you can hook up to a car battery. So some people are into that. But really, to make this thing work, you've got to have a wire coming out of your vagina plugged into your iPhone. Yeah. Okay, and somebody said we also didn't use to teach our babies how to read. Yeah, that's true, but that's apples to fucking onions, okay? Like, you can function. My mommy didn't play music for me when I was in the room womb because that's not a thing you did in the 70s. 
and I can function in society. It's a lot harder to function in society if you can't read. It's not hard to function in society if you don't have Mozart jammed into the womb. There's a difference. I'm still stuck up on the fact that you're walking around the house with a wire coming out of your vagina hooked up to your phone. Yeah, that you're probably playing words with friends on. You're playing words with friends. There's a wire that goes up inside of you. I'm still trying to figure out what it's like to be that poor baby. <laughs> like, that's the baby equivalent of literally having your neighbors show up and shove speakers in your windows and just inflicting their music upon you. That's when the, you, you're... Like imagine that. You're at home. You're in your bed sleeping. And somebody just shoves speakers in your window and turns them on. And you can't turn them off. That's when you get to like 11 months pregnant and be like, I don't know what's wrong. The kid just won't come out. He just will not come out. I don't know what's going on. Uh oh! Like traumatizing. I mean, clearly I'm not an expert in childbirth, but I feel like that would be a little traumatizing. Yeah. It's just me. We have yet another in our continuing story, and we're in continuing uh, segment. Guns are not a remote control for life. I don't know. Those guys in Oregon seem to be doing okay. Nobody's even bothering them. Nobody's bothering them. Nobody's even... Like, law enforcement's like, eh, they'll come out when they're good and hungry. Yeah, they'll be fine. They're this... white. <laughs> oh... Armed man allegedly holds IT worker hostage until his computer is fixed. Well, I hope you enjoy getting all the fucked up porn in the world emailed to you for the rest of your life. An Arlington, Virginia man was arrested and charged with abduction this week for allegedly refusing to let a computer repair technician leave his home, quote, until his computer was fixed. Police say the accused... 50-year-old Joseph Nestor Mondello, and I've gotten to show you this guy's picture because he's yeah. way, way too happy about this. Um, threatened to kill the victim while holding a gun when the incident occurred. Uh, Mondello is is in custody. He's saying it was a it was fab the workers fabricating everything but the police department including the SWAT team who had to come out there and convince him to surrender tells a different story and the cherry on top the gun was fake oh here's something i want you all to remember in case you just get a weird stupid hair up your ass if you commit a real crime with a fake gun, you're going so, to real jail. Yeah, there's no fake jail. There's not like no fake jail. There's not like a Fisher Price Little People jail. No. Where you, they put the toy crimes? No. You don't go to like plastic Lego prison for mm -hmm. using a fake gun. You go and to And then you're going to have to tell prison. everybody in real jail why you're there. And they're going to laugh at you and beat you up. I have tried. Also, I, please enjoy a lifetime of the most fucked up porn ever. Constantly <laughs> downloading onto your computer. Don't fuck with the IT guy. This used to be my exact job, you know. When I worked for Dell for five years, what I would do was I would go to on site to people's homes, to their residences to fix their computers. Nine times out of ten, everybody was cool. But there was always that one time where the guy got so pissed off that his shit was broken and you couldn't fix it. And it was your fault somehow. And it got kind of uncomfortable because you're in their house. Yeah. And there's nowhere really to run. And it's like, I want you to fix it. The hard drive is broken. I have to order a new one. So you deep fried it in beer. <laughs> did, I tell you about, it. did I tell you about the guy who installed a hard drive into his computer? With hammer and nails. <gasps> guy, uh, Dell guy, and this was supposed to be warranty work. I got out on site. He need, he added a second hard drive to his computer, but his computer case wasn't configured for two hard drives. 
So what he did was he got another computer case. He hacksawed the hard drive cage out of the other one. He put it into his original one and he nailed it in place to hold the hard drive in. That, that probably voided his warranty. Yes, it did. That's not the sort of thing you can do. Yes, it fucking did. So this, I, I perfectly... I, I'm sure he did not want to hear that. I understand firsthand that it can be a little scary going into a stranger's house to do any kind of work for them. Do not. You're not going to settle this with... If you threaten the repair guy, it's not like speed. It's not like pop quiz hot shots. I'm like, what do you do? What do you do? No, no, no. It's the repair guy is going to look for the nearest window to jump out of and your computer is still going to be broken. Yeah. But again, it's, uh, I'm not a huge fan of quoting Fight Club, but they do make some good points, which is don't fuck with the people that control your food. The basic resources you can't live without. Don't fuck with the people that control your food. Don't fuck with the guy who's fixing your computer. Don't fuck with the guy who's working on your indoor plumbing. Like, there are some people you should just not fuck with because they can fuck with you back. No one is and ever... it will be wrong when they do that. It will be wrong. I'm not saying it's right. But unless you really enjoy ingesting semen, you shouldn't be rude to the person at the restaurant. Unless you really enjoy fucking German scat porn involving wildebeests, don't fuck with the IT guy. No one is ever coming back to his house to ever fix that computer. No! He's going to have, like, Bonsai Buddy all over it forever. You better buy yourself a Mac. So troubleshooting is restart it, and if that doesn't work, buy a new one. Yeah. That's the future. Oh, well... The Paris attacks, I hate to shift gears here, but the Paris attacks six weeks ago, it was a big deal. Everyone was upset about it, rightfully so. It was a really nasty time. And you would have expected that at a time like that, law enforcement would band together and be on their best behavior and be working their hardest to help the people. And yeah, I can't even finish that one with a straight face. This comes to us from Brussels. Pol Brussels police investigate reports of police orgy amid terror alert. Oh. Well, we did learn from creepy text messages that fear is the most powerful aphrodisiac. <laughs> in the six weeks since the Paris terrorist attack, law enforcement agencies in Brussels, which had mo where most of the attackers lived or had ties, have been denounced as slow, unresponsive, disorganized, and even incompetent. To add to this, their, role, their woes, another was added Wednesday. Officials are investigating accounts of an alcohol-fueled orgy at a police station one night last month. While Brussels, the Belgian capital, was nearly shut down over fears of a, copyright, a copycat terrorist attack. At the time, soldiers have been sent to help patrol the city. According to the article, a large newspaper uh, said the orgy occurred sometime between November 21st November 26th, um, about 20 soldiers from a light infantry unit were bivouacked at a police station, according to the newspaper. After the police station closed for the night, two police women were invited upstairs to the floor where the soldiers were sleeping and had sex with eight of them. You go, girl. Wow. Uh, a spokeswoman for the Brussels West Police Agency, one of six police departments that patrol the city, confirmed Wednesday that it had begun an investigation. So... You're to protect and serve, not protect and service. <laughs> Your city is is literally under fear of another terrorist attack, like the coordinated attacks that happened in Paris, that shocked the world, that terrified an entire city, that had the entire nation just in in the grip of fear. And over in neighboring Brussels, you're fucking. I mean, if you think you might blow up. <laughs> Daver, anti-terror squad brought to you by browsers. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they were all off duty, it sounds like. Eh? Uh, is a police station really a place that you need to be drunk and fucking? 
No. If you are the police, is a police station a place where you need to be drunk and fucking? Probably not. Drunk and fucking is fine. That's one of your small little gifts of being a talking monkey for a limited time on this flying ball of mud. Drunk and fucking is one of those little perks you get for being here. But there's a time and a place for drunk and fucking. Drunk and fucking is a sometimes food. <laughs> I just, it, it's, uh, this is kind of, why are, mm. I mean, I feel like if they weren't on duty and they weren't supposed to be doing anything really important at the time. There's a terror, I mean, a terror alert. alert. But, I mean, we live in the United States. We're pretty much always on terror alert. If nobody could have sex during a terror alert, Nobody would have gotten laid for the last 10 years. Well, that's because we fucked up terror alert in America. Okay. We, we get off on fear in America. We, we've never stopped. We, we have never gone down back to terror level blue ever. We've always been at war with Eurasia. We've all, we have never dropped below terror level yellow. And what the fuck does blue, green, yellow, orange, red mean anyway? I'm just saying at least coming from an American where we're always on terror alert, if they were like, you can't fuck on terror alert, our population would plummet. Yeah, but th you're the cops and you're supposed to be instilling in the fucking public some trust in their officers that they're doing their best to make them safe and you're in the police station drunk well, and fucking. Well, if you feel safe enough to be having a drunken orgy, then... Of course! Be safe. Of course the police feel safe enough. They're the ones with the guns. Yeah. Again, I'm an American, so... Yeah, we all have guns. We all have the fucking guns. You want a gun? You go to a gumball machine. 25 cents. You got a gun. Exactly. We handing them out with birth certificates in a few years. You get. You go to a car dealership. They'll give you a certificate for a free gun. That really happened. Because America. Buy a car, get a free gun. But I'm told the rest of the world isn't like that. I'm told the no. rest of the world has things called laws and regulations. And same. With regard to guns. Yeah. Which apparently, I guess they just hate freedom. So I guess the first thing we learned tonight is drunken fucking is a sometimes food. Drunken fucking is a sometimes food. Yeah, don't don't be doing that. Especially, we, we trusted you. Especially if you're supposed to be leading by example. Yes. When you get, when you are not in the police station, when you were in your own abode, drunk and fuck all you want. Absolutely. Have you some fun. We encourage you to do so. Uh. Terror level blue balls. <laughs> We've learned don't fuck with the people you trust to keep the world going. No. They don't like that. We've learned that we're going to have an entire generation of kids who are going to be born not only afraid of loud noises, but with some really horrible taste in music. Yeah. Be kids like, why do you like Casey and the Sunshine Band? My mom had Baby Pod. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And do you think that thing vibrates? I mean, it's emitting sound. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now I can just see a woman putting, putting that thing in and deliberately turning on Motorhead. At full blast. Well, there's a whole movement in, in like the midwife community of people, women who their goal is to have an orgasm during birth. What is that, like a steam achievement or something? It's the idea, I think, is to make birth not painful and traumatic because that will pass along to the child. So they want the birth experience to be as ecstatic and wonderful as possible. For the good energy, I think. And I mean, hey, if it works for you, awesome. That sounds way more pleasant than being in excruciating pain. 
We've learned don't drive with your knees, fellas, and don't drink, drive. Two. Don't, don't live tweet your fucking drinking and driving. What the no. hell? Don't drink and drive at all. But if you're going to be an asshole and do, well, you know what? No, if you're going to be an asshole and do that, get caught. Post a video because you shouldn't be on the road. We've learned that if you need a ride home, the school bus already has people who will drive the bus for you. You don't have to steal it. There are designated people specifically to do that. Finally, we learned that if you are driving a large vehicle transporting cargo, math helps. Also reading pictograms. Yeah, you don't even need to know the words. We've made sure words are, you know, secondary. They've got pictures saying, do not. It's like, you remember those yuck stickers they used to put on things around the house? Yes. It's like, I'm am I'm pretty sure these people Except didn't. My mom used Incredible Hulk stickers because that was the scariest thing in the world to me as a child. I was terrified of the Incredible Hulk. So the medicine cabinet and the candy drawer, she put Incredible Hulk stickers all over. See, if my my mom had done that, I'd be dead now. No, I literally opened the candy drawer once and she had an Incredible Hulk poster in there and I screamed and ran away. Yeah, I, I would I would have drunk a, a gallon of bleach and I would be dead. I'm going to be the Hulk! <laughs> no, the Hulk was the scariest thing in my childhood world. I thought he was the best. Stop licking your butt on the internet. <clears throat> hey, 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 there's good money in that. That's rude. For some people, that's a way of life. 